The Lord laid something on my heart early this week, and it was just a phrase. And What is born in the Spirit dies in the Spirit, and what is born of the flesh dies in the flesh. And I, earlier, just, just a second ago, I realized, I was like, you know, I think you're preaching over the same thing again. And someone once said in a joke, said a new preacher came to town and he preached the uh, first three sermons and they were all the same. So the deacons came to him and said, hey, I don't know if you know this, but all three of your sermons have been the same. He said, uh, well, I'll see what I can do about it. The fourth week, he preached the same sermon. The deacons came to him and said, I don't think you heard what we said. He said, yeah, I heard it. He says, but when we get that, we'll move on. <laughs> and so, you know, um, I've had this, this, this spirit about me that, um, that we, we should be in preparation. That, um, that, you know what prophecy is? A lot of people kind of just, is that on? Yeah, okay. A lot of people think that when, when somebody prophesies over someone or what, when a prophet speaks, that they're, they're, they're casting the future, they're, they're telling you what the future is going to be. And, and that's not really what prophecy is. A, a prophet tells you um, pretty much what the condition is right now. Amen? And, and then the prophet tells you what that condition could lead to and probably lead to. And so there's, there's, there's times that you, you, can, you can be pastoral, there's times you've got to be prophetic, and I just feel, I think for quite a while, that, that we've been in a prophetic time. Um, I think we've been in that situation for quite some time, but more people are starting to speak of it. I believe that more clergy are starting to see the, the need to, to speak prophetically, to address the situation and, and, and where we are culturally, um, and spiritually, and, and you, you don't think they're disconnected because you're sitting in a, in a church right now. Um, culture does affect you. Even as a Christian, as, as, the, as the outside world becomes less and less professing Christians, you think, well, I'm standing strong, I'm, I'm still a good Christian, and, 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 and that's okay, but the, the outside influences are still there. And, and they don't come. The, the devil's very smart. Not a lot of people want to speak about the devil, but the devil's very smart. And he, it's his daily task to come in and chip away. And, and he'll do so, so so incrementally that you'll never see it coming until one day you'll go, you know, I just don't know about that virgin birth. Yeah, I, I just don't know if Jesus really had to die to atone for my sins. I don't really need, that thing is really offensive and, and we would probably increase our numbers if we took that big cross down. I read a, a, a book a while back and, and I don't know, we're going here, all right. And the state of the church is that um, how we, we've just tried to make it so easy to be a Christian that we've lost our center. Amen? I, I just need to talk about this. I, I think I have talked about it on occasion, but we've we, we got, we got to buckle down. We have to make this a priority. And we've, we've made a church, and this is not my quotation, this is not my phrase, but you, I'm sure you'll use it once you hear it. We've made church about tight jeans, big screens, and smoke machines. Amen. And, and, and it's, it's, what can we do to get people in? What can we do to get people in? And, and then we just water down everything so we can get so many people in. Then the discipleship just, just goes because now we've got so many people in. We've got such a large budget. We can't, uh, Lord, we can't afford to offend anybody. We've got to make budget. We've got to uh, continue our growth numbers because we'd, if we see them decline, we've got to change the doctrine. And so now we've got to soften our stance on everything. Right? And what you got is just a bunch of people in church. And that's all you have. You don't have any disciples. You don't have anybody baptized in the Holy Spirit. They're not living in the Spirit. They're not functioning in the Spirit. 
They're just going to church. They feel good. It's a one hour feel good thing. And that, in comparison to what is going on around the world to Christians, I personally am ashamed. I think that's where this comes from. I personally have been ashamed of my Christianity for quite a while. I'm not ashamed of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of that right there. But I'm ashamed of my commitment to the Gospel in comparison to other people's. We went downtown not, maybe last week to feed the homeless at Woodruff Park. I had not been to Atlanta in a while. I had definitely not been to Woodruff Park in a while. It's right there at Underground. And when... You know, God, there's providential relationships. When God puts somebody beside you and says, hey, would you like to go downtown and feed some homeless people? My first reaction is, no. <laughs> no, I don't. I got a cushy job pastoring a great church in Dahlonega, Georgia at the crest of the mountains. I'm spoiled. Do I want to go? No, I don't want to go. Do I want it to get done? Yes, I want it to get done. Do I know that those people need it? Yes, I know those people need it. But then all of a sudden, God puts somebody, walks by your path and says, you want to go down to Atlanta today and help feed the people? And you go, that may be God right there. <laughs> this is one of those obedient moments. And I, I'm, I'm ashamed to tell you, I'm, you know, this is confessional of the pastor. I got down there and I didn't know what to do. I was so out of my element. And this, this is the sad part. This was Jesus' element. This is where Jesus gravitated to. This is, this is where He was. This is where He said, I came for these people. I didn't come for the righteous. I came for these people. The people on the outside, the people whose society has shunned the lepers, um, and you know the tax collector. You know we'll deal with him later, but you know we got to go over and talk to him. We got to let him know there's a new way. And I realize down there, I'm pretty good about praying for people. If the Lord, you know, just says. You know, pray for that guy. I'll turn around and say, the Lord's telling me to pray for you. And I'll pray for him. And, and I have seen that. But the people that were running this ministry said the food is just a means to get them here to talk to them and pray for them and minister to them. And I'm telling you, I was so ashamed because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to pray for. Part of me, the carnal part of me said, what'd you do to get in here? What did you do to wind up having everything that belongs to you in that suitcase? And then, when the food's gone, they're gone. And all that did was try and, it just tried to validate you were right there only here for the food. But then in the feeding of the 5,000, the same happened there. When the food was gone, the disciples were gone. And there was some hatred. There was some, there was some people said some nasty things to us. It's, it's okay. Their, their, lives aren't, their lives aren't like mine. But I was just, I was, I was, uh, I was ashamed. I'm glad I went, but I was ashamed that I didn't know the prayers to pray. I didn't know the way to nurture. I did not know how to minister to them. And it, and it, it convicted me. It really did. We'll go back. We have to go back. Because once you see it, you can't, you can't just, you can't, you know, wake up one Saturday morning and go, wow, a great day. Would you like to ride to the mountains, okay? <clears throat> Maybe we'll have brunch. When you know that something like that is going on. And it goes on around the world. And I'm afraid that the church is it's forgotten these things. We, we write checks and 
You know, you know the reason we send people on mission trips? Do you really know why we do that? Because Kay went on one. She came back. She told me some stories. I was like, it, it's probably better just to write a check. You know? But they extort so much money when you write a check and just send money down there. The, the, the corruption is everything. But we know that we can never alleviate. We'll go down there and feed those homeless again. But I know that we'll never alleviate that. Those people will be down there. You know, those quite possibly uh, for the rest of their lives. But we send people on mission trips because they, don't, they, they leave one way and they come back another. They see the condition of the world and it changes them. Jesus said, the poor, we will always have them with us. It's a condition of culture and society. They will always be there. We are just privileged. We are just very privileged. So I think... The prophetic thing is that we're, we're, in a bad, we're in a bad condition. We are, we are so spoiled, maybe. We're in a bad condition, the church. Because I know um, people don't want to preach about... And this is going to... I'm telling you, this is where I'll probably start going. I'll probably, you know, not people... Some people aren't going to like it. But, you know, um, I got some news for you. Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming back. And you won't know the moment. You won't know the hour. But he's coming back. And he was real explicit about being prepared and staying prepared. And so I think what, what, the, what the Lord is kind of laying on my heart is prepare us. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not an apocalyptic kind of doomsday guy, but I'm telling you, if the Bible and Jesus said be prepared, then it's, 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 it's my responsibility to have you prepared. Amen? It's not personal. It's a mandate from Jesus Christ to be prepared. And I, as the spiritual leader of this church, it falls upon me to get you there. To push you there. And push you out of your comfort zone into a zone where you know what God's judgment, what Jesus' judgment will be on you when it happens. Because that's going to happen as well. Your sins are forgiven. But what you did in this life will be judged. And my job is to prepare you for that judgment. And for you to want to pass and make a good grade on that judgment day. And I will never doubt your relationship with Jesus Christ, whether you're saved or unsaved. But I will, I will question the depth of that relationship. And I can do that because I can question my own depth of that relationship and my own shortcomings. So when I ask you about yours, it's because I'm asking myself about mine. Amen? We're clear on that, right? I told you a week or two ago my mother had an experience. In a nutshell, she's, she's, she's been in a relationship with Jesus Christ for a long time. But I believe she was born again about two or three weeks ago. She had an experience. She has an assurance now. She has a, a conviction now that it's, it's, not, it's not legalism. It's what, what, what is born in the flesh will die in the flesh. If you try and get into heaven in a legalistic way, you will not do it. Because what's born of the flesh dies in the flesh, and it dies like flesh. And to be born of the Spirit, to have the, the relationship, the spiritual relationship, is what God desires and what He wants you to have. Is the peace and the connection and the wholeness and the fullness of a full and vibrant relationship with Him. Amen? Here, this is in 2 Corinthians. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. When I, when I go down, and, and when I, we were in that um, Woodruff Park, the, the flesh doesn't know how to minister to those people. 
That's what it was. I went down there as a carnal being and, and I was, the flesh was ill-equipped. But the, but, the, but the flesh had its guard up. You know what I'm saying? I put my, 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 my guard up. I, I, I didn't want... Because to walk in the Spirit means a vulnerability. Right? I don't know what to say, but the Bible says, don't worry about what to say. The Spirit will reveal to you what to say. And now I'm going to read out of the third chapter of John. This is very... And I, I probably preached upon this this year. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus and the leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above or born again. Depends on what translation you're there. But it is a new birth. Amen? We are in agreement that it's a new birth. Something happens. You're not the same. And Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and Spirit. A new birth of the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so the, the, in John 14, He later says, If you love Me, you will keep My commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper. Now, we, we, don't, we, you know, we don't want to talk about the Holy Ghost, Holy, Holy Spirit very often, but, but that's all that we got. Right? That's all that we got that, that will propel us and allow us to do the works of, works of God and the works of salvation. It was, we're, we're an integral part of the redemption of the world. The ministry of reconciliation is falling on us. And he said, and, and I will ask the Father and He will give you another helper. And in the Greek, that word another is not someone different. It's not I will send someone different. I will send another and it means like me. Just like me. It means like if a police officer came up and he goes, I'm going to have another one come, you would know what he was talking about, right? There will be another police officer here in just a second. And Jesus is saying, there will be another. It will be the same as me. It will be God. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit is not part of the Trinity. It is the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is not like God. The Holy Spirit is God. And He says, I will send that to you. And it will dwell in you. And everything that you need to do, it will equip you to do. The work of the church in the next millennium is going to be very dependent on the presence of the Holy Spirit in the church. In the body of Christ. Scripture's clear. He's coming back for His bride, and the bride needs to be spotless. You cannot become spotless without the Holy Spirit. Your flesh will not get you there. It will not get you there. The great thing about the Holy Spirit is once you... Once you you know it's there and you start depending on it and you start moving in it, you become much more comfortable in delegating more to the Spirit. We all live in this world. I'll handle the big stuff, Lord, if you'll just handle the sickness. Am I the only one? Never wants to call God in on the little stuff. Just the big stuff. Lord, I'll handle my marriage. Lord, I'll handle that checkbook. You just, keep, you just give me a good new job, Lord, and I'll handle what goes out. The Lord's coming back. It's just a question of what condition He finds us in.
I want you to be convicted. God wants you to be convicted. And God's telling me to make sure you are convicted or at least you know the truth. I can't sit up here and lie to you. I can't sit up here and, and just make you feel good. Now I'll leave you with this. God loves you more than anything in the entire world. You are the apple of His eye. He doesn't sleep, but if He did, if He got up, the first thing on His mind would be you and all your problems. What an awesome God. My failings and my shortcomings are nothing to God. Nothing. All the sin of the world compressed in one moment. One single moment. One event. All the sin of the world. All past, present, and future. Bam! Just like that. Just in a ball and just laid all on Jesus Christ in that one minute. And He could have backed out. He could have backed out, but He did not. Praise God. And He did this while you were in the condition that you were in. Amen? An adulterer, a drunkard, an addict. It didn't matter. He bore it all. All sin. All kinds of sin. Took it right there on the cross. Redeemed you just like that. And He did it willingly. And He did it because He loves you. And He wants you to love other people. When I tell you there's people walking around with no hope, I've been one of those people. To walk around with no hope with no relationship with anybody that had any real significant power in the world. But now, not only do I have hope, I have future. And it's because I am a child of God. The blood that flows in me flowed through Jesus. I'm a full heir. And today, He wants to make sure that you're a full heir. And that you know that. And that there's no question in your mind. Get that out of the way today. Before we go any further, that's one thing we have to deal with. Are you saved? Are you born again? My mother went many years, wasn't sure, but she's sure now. And it brings my heart great joy. Right. There's, there's still other people. There's still other people around me I'm not so sure about. But I want to know, and I want them to know. Amen? Rhonda, you ready? Today's the day. Today's the day. Don't wait, don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait, don't wait for anything else. Today's the day. If you don't know, you need to know. If there's any question there needs, that needs to be answered. What's legalistic? Hmm? What's legalistic? Thinking that you thinking that by being by doing the right things you can you can provide yourself with salvation. Many people outside don't want to accept the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Many in the church are diminishing the work of Jesus Christ on that cross. You sliding into legalism, what you're saying is, I don't need that. I can do it on my own. I'm a good you've heard it before. An atheist say, I'm a good person. I'm going to go on that. Okay. But if it doesn't work out, let me tell you what your eternity looks like. It's total damnation. That's what your eternity is. I'm, I'm banking on, I, at one time I was banking on eternity in heaven. So I got my heaven card. You know what I'm saying? My little heaven ticket. Then I realized there was something more. There was more of a relationship that the Holy Spirit would come and dwell in me and allow me to do things I could never do on my own. And that's just the beginning. I haven't even scratched the surface of an abundant life. That's what legalism is. Stand and sing to page 460. You've got to be all messed up. Can you tell what page is? Page 462. We see the first, second, and last. And the right again. Stand, let's sing. All things can be conquered through Jesus Christ. Amen.
because that was me. I was raised in the church. I did all the creeds. I sat there and looked good. I was a youth minister. Shouldn't have been. They should, I probably should have played them back. Um, that was me. Going to go to heaven on faith. Good works. Not my belief. My relationship was not where it was. So remember I told you about the boat? So I told you about the boat thing. Well, when something really tragic happened to me and broke my heart, we came to church, we came here, preacher said, come meet me and let's pray. Well, he had a prayer team here, and we were praying, and I'm, this is the truth, I'm telling you the truth. All I could see was a big boulder between me and Jesus. I couldn't get through that boulder. Something was blocking. And it wasn't until I had to surrender. When we surrender, they were saying, I trust you. I didn't trust him, but I do now. Amen. Do you trust the Lord with all your problems? They're, they're bigger than me. My problems are bigger than me. They get overwhelming. I suffer from anxiety. You know what I'm saying? They, they're just, they can be overwhelming. They're nothing for him. They're nothing. And, and here's the thing. He anticipates and looks forward to helping you through. You, you, some, you got kids. Is there a greater joy than in helping your children through something? To get them through to the other side? That's exactly the, the wants and, and the desires of, 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 of God through Jesus Christ. And, and to, to dwell with us, actually be a part, to dwell. <coughs> the Holy Spirit, God lives in you. God lives in you. Use that asset. Use that asset. The Lord loves you. And the Lord, there's nothing the Lord loves you for. Amen. Amen. See you in a minute after the meeting.